What I'm saying right now it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's, I'm saying that if someone really knew me, it would be impossible for them to hate me. You know what? Since we're wrong all the time, why don't you just enlighten us? Why don't you just guide us the right way? Who told you I wasn't doing that? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, why, why don't you just like appear to our senses and, and just tell us that we're wrong? Do you really think I'm the kind of guy that would just appear to your senses? You know, the truth is, I am your senses. You're my senses? No, not really. I'm actually more than that. But that makes more sense than being able to appear to your senses. You see, I'm not an object like you. I'm a subject. And a subject can touch you, but you cannot touch the subject. You know? You, you, can, you can see me just as well as your thoughts, you know? It's like you can see a banana, but the event of your seeing a banana itself is not seeable. And I am far more like the scene of the banana than the banana itself. Well, if I can't see you, how do I know you exist? That's a good question. How do you know I exist? Well, I'm talking to you. How do you know you're talking to me? What if you told a psychiatrist, Oh, yesterday I talked to God. What do you think he'd say to you? I guess they would just say that I've been talking to myself. And they would be right. What? You mean you don't exist? What are you, Mr. False Conclusions? Just because you're talking to yourself doesn't mean that I don't exist. Well, if I think I'm talking to you, and I'm really just talking to myself, how does that prove you exist? Okay, your question is based on two wrongs and a wrong. The question of whether or not you're talking to me, and the question of whether or not I really exist are totally separate. Even if you weren't talking to me right now, which you obviously are, that doesn't mean that I don't exist. Sorry. So instead of saying, if I'm talking to myself, then you don't exist, I should have said, if I'm talking to myself, then I'm obviously not talking to you. Hey, that is different, but it's still wrong. Oh, come on. If I'm only talking to myself, then how can I be talking to you? I think the word only is confusing you, because I can give you several reasons in which you're talking to yourself doesn't mean that you're not talking to me. Give me one reason. Okay, well one reason is that you and I are identical. <gasps> Blasphemy. Only to some religions, but to others it's the plain and simple truth. So you're telling me the only way out of my pickle here is to believe that you and I are identical? No, you little nuthead, that's only one reason. I have a bunch of them. For example, it may be that you are part of me, in which case you may be talking to that part of me, which is you. Or I may be part of you, in which case you may be talking to that part of you, which is me. Or again, you and I might partially overlap, in which case you may be talking to the intersection and hence talking both to you and to me. The only way that you're talking to yourself might seem to imply that you are not talking to me is if you and I are totally disjoint. And even then, you can conceivably be talking to both of us. I mean, I really can't put it more simply than that. Huh. I see. So you claim you exist? What? No. How could you have not understood that? We haven't even started talking about my existence. All I've said is that if you're talking to yourself, it doesn't mean that I don't exist. And also it doesn't mean that you're not talking to me. You know what? That's cool with me. All I really want to know is if you exist. What a strange question. No, it isn't. Why? Everyone asks that question. I know that. It's not the question that's strange. You asking me yourself is strange. Why? Because I'm the one you're asking about my own existence. I mean, I understand you're excited and that you're worried that this whole thing might be a hallucination, but how can you possibly ask about the existence of someone to that very someone who you're not sure exists or not? You're not going to tell me whether you exist or not. Listen, I'm just saying that no answer I give you will make you happy. Suppose I just said, No, I don't exist. What would that prove? Nothing. Or if I said, yeah, I exist, would that convince you? No. Well, if you can't tell me whether or not you exist, then who can? That is something which no one can tell you. It is something which only you can find out for yourself. Okay. How do I find that out for myself? That also no one can tell you. 
This is another thing you will have to find out for yourself. So there's no way you can help me? I didn't say that. I said, there is no way I can tell you. But that doesn't mean there's no way I can help you. Well then, how can you help me? You just leave that to me. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked here. We're supposed to be talking about why I gave you free will. Remember, your first idea of me giving you free will is, was to test you. Which, to me, that's just stupid. You can't think of a nicer reason why I gave you free will? Well, my neighbor told me something about this once. He's an Orthodox rabbi. Well, he said that the way we are constituted, it is simply not possible for us to enjoy salvation unless we feel we've earned it. And to earn it, we need free will. That is a much nicer explanation, but it's extremely far from right. Okay, and especially according to Orthodox Judaism, I created angels and they have no free will. They're in actual sight of me and are so completely attracted by goodness that they have never even the slightest temptation towards evil. They really have no choice in the matter, yet they're eternally happy even though they've never earned it. So if your rabbi's explanation were correct, why wouldn't I have just simply created only angels and no humans? Beats me, why didn't you do that? Because the explanation is just completely wrong. I've never created any ready-made angels like on some kind of assembly line. All living things ultimately come to a state which might be called angelhood. I think it's right after Eagle Scout. But just as all human beings are in a certain stage of biologic evolution, angels are simply the end result of a process of cosmic evolution. The only difference between the so-called saint and the so-called sinner, besides the obvious color of their hearts, is that the saint is extremely older than the sinner. I mean, unfortunately, it takes many, many moons to learn the most important fact of the universe. Evil is simply painful. All the arguments of the moralists with their extremely well-lettered picket signs, with the reasons why people shouldn't commit evil acts, simply just disappear in the light of one basic truth, that evil is suffering. So no, my confused friend, I'm not a moralist. I'm wholly utilitarian and a vegetarian. But that I should have been thought of in the role of a moralist is one of the great tragedies of the human race. My whole role in everything, if you can use this misleading expression, is neither to punish nor reward, but to help the process by which all living things can come to ultimate perfection. Why did you say that your expression is misleading? First of all, it's just wrong to speak of my role in the scheme of things because, you know what? I am the scheme of things. And secondly, it's just as wrong to speak of my helping the process of all living things attain enlightenment because I am that very process. I don't do things, but through me, things just get done. And I'm not the cause of cosmic process. I, I am, am the cosmic process. <laughs> I think the best definition of me which you guys have come up with, at least in your present state of evolution, is that I am the very process of enlightenment. And those who wish to think of the devil, although I wish they wouldn't, might also see him as the unfortunate length of time the whole process take. So really, the devil is necessary. And the process does take an enormous length of time, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. But let me assure you, once you more fully understand this process, the painful length of time will no longer be regarded as a limitation or an evil. It will be seen as the very essence of the process itself. <laughs>